Welcome back to 101 East. Indonesia's capital, Jakarta, is sinking by at least six centimetres every year. In 20 years, a third of the city could be underwater. And experts say rising seawater at high tide, combined with heavy rains, could spell a perfect storm to come. Here's more from Jeff Thompson. When it's finished, Kamang Village will cater to every whim of its 10,000 residents. Yeah, this is the most exciting development uh, at Jakarta now, uh, probably becoming top of the town. Taking me on a tour is marketing director Yopi Rusli. All the site is 12 hectare, and this part of the 12 hectare is 9.5 hectare, where the first development that we're going to do. Uh, we're going to start with one big mall, 130,000 square meter, and then 325 suites of hotel. L lots of swimming pools. Uh, a lot of swimming pools, two clubs, and also we have a wedding chapel, we have school, and we will have hospital also. Everything? Everything, everything. Everything you need is here. That's why we call it integrated development. I think that is a solution for what Jakarta people need. Eleven towers of luxury apartments, all sitting high and dry above the city's flooding woes. Through the lifting of the building by columns, underneath the water can still pass through and being absorbed to the ground. So the whole development will sit above the flood. Right, right. With no effective mass public transport system, traffic congestion in Jakarta rates among the world's worst. 900 extra motorcycles and 260 new cars are added to the roads every day. Life in the city can be crazy. When the real world gets just too much, Jakarta's elites can always escape into expensive malls like this one, where every day's a perfect day. If you fancy a day at the seaside, five floors up, try this place. And in other malls, without even leaving Jakarta, you can travel the world. But this city's mall culture is not just innocent escapism for those who can afford it. Every one of them makes the city heavier. And that's not a good thing, because Jakarta is sinking. The cause is groundwater extraction. Fewer than half of Jakarta's households have water on tap. The rest pump it up from underground. Industrial users, big malls and hotels dig wells hundreds of metres deep. Big buildings that use deep wells are big contributors to groundwater extraction. But above and beyond that, when a city develops, the city gets heavier. And the combination of water being extracted and creating vacuums in the aquifer and the city getting heavier pushes the city downwards. The sinking phenomenon now causes Jakarta to flood on days when there's no rain at all. On a bright blue sky on June 14, 2007, suddenly a whole North Jakarta got flooded. We were uh, going towards uh, Bali 2007, the large uh, climate conference, and this was a real big flood and, uh, and um, we could not believe that this was climate change. 
Actually, the uh, cycle of the moon is far more important causing these floods uh, uh, in Jakarta than, uh, than uh, climate change. Yan Yup calculated that this flooding was entirely predictable. To show us what he meant, in early May this year, he suggested we pay a visit to Jakarta's airport, which runs along low-lying land near the sea. And this is what we found. Floodwaters which were forcing travellers to abandon their cars. No choice. As the predictions proved correct, Jakarta's administration began to take notice. The cycle of the moon and the angle of the earth has caused king tides since time began. The difference now is that as Jakarta sinks, it's slipping below sea level. It was next predicted that Jakarta would flood again in early June. We headed to the city's northern shores and found that the message was getting through to the poor people who live here. High tide was due at 10 o'clock at night and work was underway to bolster the sea wall with sandbags. As the water went up, news came through that a shift in weather patterns way out to sea meant that this night's rise would be 20 centimetres less than expected. This time Jakarta was lucky. It was short of a disaster, but an ominous taste of things to come. The people living down near the sea wall have been lucky. The sandbags have held. It's a different story up here. There's been a breach and the streets are flooded. We're just going to go and have a look. We find the sea is rushing in much more than the locals are used to. From her family shop, as Wattie has spent her whole life watching the waters come and go. As the ocean keeps coming, a journey by Bichak is the only way for Aswati to get home safely, where the sea is lapping at her door. Last year, it was less accommodating. Oh, can you go to the Yeah. This is the bottom. The waves are about a meter. So this has become normal life for these people, and it could continue, except for the fact that Jakarta is now sinking up to six centimetres a year, and sometimes more. Now, in 18 years' time, these king tides will return, and this entire area could become uninhabitable. The city is expected to be about one metre lower than uh, at the current position. And that means that the uh, sea will come in permanently and floods the first two, three, four kilometres of uh, the coastal area of Jakarta. And we expect that it will be completely unlivable and um, it will not be possible to live there if, uh, if nothing is done. The choices are stark and none of them are easy. Either stop groundwater extraction or build a massive sea wall off Jakarta's coast. If not, millions of people will be permanently displaced. And if sea flooding coincides with heavy rains in Jakarta and the surrounding hills, things will be even worse. The perfect storm, if you will, the perfect combination of the most worst case scenario that Jakarta can endure. So we are very concerned with, uh, with uh, what will happen in the next uh, 10 to 18 years. 
Uh, this is the flooding from the sea, but when that combines with a flood uh, during the wet season, like the floods that we saw in 2007 and 2002 and 1996, real big floods, this uh, will bring disaster to Jakarta and uh, affect millions and millions of people. A lack of planning and maintenance has placed Indonesia's capital in this precarious position. Now it's up to the city's administration to quickly settle on solutions. Without action, almost a third of Jakarta will be lost to the sea within the next 20 years. That's all we have time for this week from all of us here at 101 East. Thanks for watching and see you again next week.